meiosis. This is the tricky one, but it actually isn't that bad. It also has a logical process. And what I want you to think about here is meiosis occurs in only the sex cells, which means the eggs and the sperm, all right? And it's given some different names like reduction, division, and whatnot. But let's go through it, all right? I've already started with the cell cycles, so you know where that is. And where I'm going to begin now is with replicated DNA entering in meiosis. And from the very beginning, it's different than mitosis. The second half of meiosis is just like mitosis. The first half is distinctly different. And the reason it's different is that when the chromosomes start out here, the way that they line up is not on their centromeres. It's not on their centromeres. It's quite different. They line up with their homologous pair. And what's strange about it is, I think, that their homologous pair is not in the middle or organized in any really clear way, except that they, they get together with their pair, and they get together in wherever they can in this place. And this is called the prophase time, all right? Now, in prophase, what's going to happen is they're with their pair somewhere in here, and then the pairs exchange DNA. Then we talk about genetic variants, and some of this I, I have in the... Uh, in your written lecture, but this is the part where two important things occur. One of them is called crossing over. Because they're so close together, these guys exchange chunks of DNA. DNA breaks and reconnects, swapping the ends of the arms of the chromosomes. It's hard for me to draw that easily in the short video, so I'm not going to represent it, but it does happen here. All right. And all that does is causes a mixing up of the combinations of alleles. It doesn't give you any new alleles usually, but it mixes them up so you get new combinations. So you can mix your brown hair with your blue eyes over here or whatnot. All right? This is actually prophase one. And then the only other important phase in the first half is metaphase. And metaphase, these guys then move around and they line up. And the way they line up is with their homologous pair. Now notice this is totally different than what we saw in mitosis. They're not on their centromeres, they're with their homologous pair. Now, what can happen is this pair is like a dancing couple. They pair up and then they sort of spin around like this together they're actually quite close together. I haven't drawn them very close. And they spin. You can think of this as a slot machine. And then which is on which side when they come to a halt? There's no telling. So every single pair is spinning independently. And then at some point, the little cables come out and grab on. And they're going to separate the homologous pairs. That's pretty awesome. They separate the homologous pairs and now you get two different cells. But who's on which side? It's hard to predict. You can't predict. So it could be red and black, or it could be black and red. I mean, there's some off chance you can get all red on one side and all black on the other. That process by which you mix up the homologous pairs, independent assortment, Assortment is the assorting of these things, and they're independent for each pair, okay? And this is metaphase one. So the obviously the end product of this is going to be two cells like this. Now the two cells are already not identical because for one, the homologous pairs don't necessarily have the same alleles. They do have the same genes, but not the same alleles. And because we've had crossing over, these individual sisters are not identical anymore either. So they swapped around some DNA here and here with these guys. All right. So um, the next thing that's going to happen though is, so now when you finish this, you've got two cells, right? And those two cells look like this and like this. And they look like this long and short, okay? 
two cells. Now each of these cells goes into the second phase of meiosis. And in this phase, um, they are going to divide on, by their centromeres. So in metaphase two, I'll just go ahead and label this one metaphase two because I've drawn it pretty close to that. These guys line up here, one above the other, right? So now, when the cables come out and pull apart the two sisters, pull them apart, the result is going to be a whole bunch of cells. Let's go ahead and draw what that looks like over here because you know what I've done. I've taken up some space over there. One of those cells is going to look like this. It's going to divide into two cells with a long, long black, short black, long, long, and then we got short red, short red, and short red, okay? And the other two cells will look like I like to draw these cells tall and skinny. They don't have to be tall and skinny like this. But they'll be, here's the long ones, long reds. And in this case, the short black ones. All right. So now I've got four cells that came out of this. And although it looks like these two are identical, because crossing over occurred, it actually causes a mix-up of the different genes in here so that you get different genes in different places, different alleles. And the same goes for this. You get different chop-ups of the different materials. And so none of these four things are identical to each other. They're actually each one distinct and unique. And each of these goes on then to become a sperm cell, in my example. Or uh, you could have this type of division leading to an egg cell, um, which is not quite the same, but very similar. So this is meiosis. and. Uh, Let's go back and take a quick look. Prophase 1, look, I left out the H. Prophase 1, okay, get with your pair. Metaphase 1, line up with your homologous pair. Metaphase 2, line up on your centromeres. Big differences. Because remember, mitosis was just metaphase 2, basically. Line up on your centromeres and separate. Okay. But this is the part we've added in, in, in meiosis. All right. So I think that covers it. Hope you're all set.